Hey all, a uh, quick video. Uh, as I've noticed a few things since doing 63 episodes of e-commerce Australia podcast, as you can see there on the screen, um, there was one common theme that um, pretty much every founder, every e-commerce founder has mentioned to me, or every e-commerce um, expert who's working brand side has mentioned to me. So I thought I'd do a quick video on it. Um, so I mentioned we surveyed, we've sur surveyed or interviewed over 60 e-commerce experts, and this is the most common um, success hack, if you want to call it that, uh, to win in e-commerce. So not only will I tell you the answer in this video, but also walk, walk through the, the execution of how to do it. So you can start deploying the same tactics. It's not necessarily a hack, um, but it's the most common tip. They've all mentioned in various ways and means. So uh, before we get started, my, my story from a professional jockey to now ran, running an e-commerce agency based here in Melbourne, Australia. I spent 10 years in retail and developed a real passion for uh, e-commerce as I got more involved with marketing. Uh, I still believe we're very early in that e-commerce uh, movement. Um, I see I work with great talent, uh, great businesses through not only my agency, Remarkable Digital, um, but you know, as I said, mentioning um, on the podcast, we get to interview some of the, the, the best talent in Australia. So they all mention this exact tactic and that's what I wanna run through here today. The most common advice to winning in e-commerce is this. I'm covering the screen. Those that know their customers best win. And now, it, takes, it can take various different shapes and forms, but the closer you are to your customer, the better you are. So. Uh, we need to get, if you want to succeed in e-commerce, we need to get better at asking our, our customers questions and understanding their pain points, their journeys, how they found our website, how they use our products. We just can't assume that we know because we've developed the product. So yeah, the, the key driver for success is knowing the customers, um, but also taking that a step further uh, in actually talking to their customers too. So actually asking them rather than assuming that we know the answer. So in the next few minutes, I'm gonna run through exactly how we do this. The brands that are closest to their customers will ultimately win though. And here's some more benefits of this. So these are just some of the benefits. One I haven't included yet in this list is, as it's quite broad, but but asking your customers questions just builds better relationships with your customers. And that is that is reason enough. Most of us are in business to fill a need, uh, provide a service or a product that makes someone else's lives better. So some of the benefits, uh, real-time customer feedback, uh, learn of new product opportunities. So if you're asking the right questions, you can start to develop ancillary products that will um, benefit the user. Um, boost customer loyalty. So the more questions you ask, the more you build that relationship and it, and it, um, it builds a, a nice sort of loyal following. Uh, improve customer retention because you're actually caring about what their needs are and then uh, then obviously adapting to those. You're, you're obviously gonna get a sales increase because you can continue to improve your, your product or your service or your UX. Validate customer feedback so um, you know you can validate what the feedback is and then understand and make your products even better and you can start to identify new markets and trends as well. So some of the questions to ask, uh, we'll get into how we do this in the next slides but um, some of the questions could be as follows. So how was our communication post-purchase? Now the, the post-purchase journey is so important when building a great business, particularly a great econ business. Once the order has been shipped, it's only really the start of the of the relationship, you know, it's the most important time to communicate well. Once they've handed over, once that customer has handed over their money, then there is an expectation that they get served really well and that that communication piece is super important to keep them informed, engaged, excited that what they've paid for is a good purchase. So you want to validate, validate their, their decision making process. The next one is, did you find the website easier to navigate and use? Now, this can give you a great clarity on, on what people who aren't involved in your brand day to day have to say about the UX. So that's a good question to ask. Is there anything that almost made you not purchase from us? Now, one of the CRO experts I had on early on in the in the program, uh, in, the, in the podcast, threw up this question, it's a really good question, and it's something that even you could put, put as like a, a pop-up and an exit intent question on your website. Just really, 
understand like what were they trying to weigh up what were they was there anything that you have on your website that's not very user friendly and almost made people click away but if you ask them after the purchase that means that you haven't got in the way of the actual purchase which is good did you compare us to other brands if so why us again good to know some competitor research but also it's good to understand their thinking around why they were looking at other brands obviously most people will have a few different brands that they look at but understanding why they're looking at them things that they were considering between the two or three brands you might not get all of these questions by the way if you ring them up and, and ask them um, but even just pick a couple and, and use that for a month and then go on to the next lot for for the next month if you follow us on social media relatively straightforward one you could probably get that through email and, and sms where do you consume most of your content's a great one are you on instagram more are you on facebook do you spend more of your time on TikTok? What's important to you when purchasing online? This question could be around, you know, sustainability. It could be around shipping. It could be around returns process. You don't really know until you ask these questions. And if there is some commonalities that start to come up, then you can tweak your your T's and C's to make sure that you're you're appeasing a lot more customers. So would you refer this product to a friend or family member? Obviously. A great one and, and get them to you know to start to think about referring that or giving you a, re a review or something like that as well so that's a good one to consider so these are all great love the theory perfect but how do we put this into practice so we know the why the benefits of doing so but so how do we do this ideas are great it's all about the execution right time to get uncomfortable sometimes the best way is the most direct and obvious way if we want to get a better body we know we need to eat better we want to get more in, we want to get more sales in business we need to talk to more people the same applies here uh, the first uh, the first um, big idea I have is just pick up the phone um, I recently had a founder on who's got she's got about 12 million dollar business uh, she's got over 50 staff and off the back of the recording that we did she was going to then go and give her her customers a call from Monday to Friday and, and ask as many questions as she can it's the easiest way it's the most direct way you can pick up tonality of their voice you can you can get hold of them straight away you're building really good relationships you're asking about them how they found it it builds really good loyalty picking up the phone is the number one best way to contact your customers who have purchased from you to say hey thanks for your purchase what can we do better how you like the product how do you use the product if you want to you can ask, you can give them a, a code to incentivize them back again Maybe you don't need to, but that's just a thought. But picking up the phone is clearly uh, the best way to do it. Next one, so these are potentially not for people who have purchased already, but people who are leaving the site without purchasing. It's a really good way to, yeah, to just get one question answered. And it's something that you can automate. So it's not uh, manual labor. You can set up some automation there. What made you exit? And just try and find one reason why they didn't purchase. So that's a good one to, to set up. Not too hard. Email and SMS is obviously great. You're sending out email, you're sending out SMSs already. Start to engage in some two-way conversation around that. Another excuse to email them, another excuse to get in front of them. In you know, SMS, I'd use that quite sparingly for effect, but they're another good communication channel which customers are kind of used to brands engaging with them. So that's another one you could set up some automations within that. Social DMs are a great one. I love the fact, I love brands that communicate with their uh, ideal ICPs, their ideal customer personas or profiles through social media. You know, sometimes when we're posting on social, we're wondering why we're getting no engagement. And then you realize as a brand, are you really engaging with your ideal customers as well? So social DMs are good, they're not invasive, they're pretty conversational. And again, consumers are kind of used to that a little bit. Um, live chats are great ones, so you know help people to uh, find what they're looking for on the on the website, but also start to tap into your customer service team, which I've got on the next slide. But live chat is one way to execute asking your customers questions um, and just starting to get a feel as to how they're finding the website. Customer service team is a brilliant one, so. Generally, they deal with all the problems that customers have had when it comes to purchasing. You know, what are the common questions that come up? What are the common complaints? Uh, what are the yeah, what are the, the top ten questions that they get asked a lot? Create content around that, and then make sure that you can improve your UX on your website so that they get some different levels of questions, and then continue to optimize those. Uh, live streaming is a really interesting one. One I love. I love the fact 
of building an audience on social media and then having some live streaming ask so you get some real-time feedback talking about your products your services there might be some topical conversations that are happening in your industry at the moment you know you could build an audience get some influencers on board build that real education piece build the value and whilst you're getting them you'll be out you'll be surprised at how many questions you get around your products and then start to develop those into your website add them to your user journeys and uh, you'll be in a lot better position so in summary you must have a way somehow to generate feedback from customers phone is best it's the most direct it builds relationships but utilize automation across live chat sms and email the closer you are to your customers the more loyal the more fans more recurring sales more brand loyalty the bigger chance you have of building a really great e-commerce business and i hope you got something out of this one